Well, hello again. In this example, you will learn how to develop influence lines for a beam using the qualitative approach. Specifically, we are going to be taking a look at this beam, which is a multi-connected beam, having a moment release at mid-distance. We are being asked to develop the influence lines for four response quantities. That is the moment at A, the shear at section 1, the shear at section 2, and the reaction at CY. The qualitative approach says that we are to sketch deflected shapes. We first insert a release for the response quantity of interest, and then we sketch the deflected shape for that. So I will step you through that process for this particular case. I have got an axis sketched here for the moment at A that's going to have units of feet. Step number one is go ahead and insert a release for the response quantity of interest. Since we are looking for the moment at A, I am going to insert a moment release at point A. Then I'm going to sketch arrows on this that indicate a positive rotation. Now this will help me sketch the deflected shape of interest, but before I draw any lines, I want to make sure that I understand what my support conditions are telling me. So over here, at point C, I know I've got a roller, which then says that that cannot move up and down. So I know the display shape looks like this. At point A, it can't move up and down either, so I know that my display shape has got to come here. Now because I have inserted a release, it can rotate. And in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this arrow, and it tells me that that member, member AB, is going to rotate clockwise. So I'll go ahead and get that sketched, rotated in a clockwise fashion. Now I come down to the next release, and I know at a moment release, sometimes called a hinge, that the slope can change. And so there is no issue there if I then connect these dots back. That becomes the display shape. And what we need to do next is we need to solve for what the magnitudes are on that. What I know is that the process requires that I apply a unit rotation. Using small angle theory, I can figure out what that magnitude is. Small angle theory says that I can take the angle, 1, multiply it by the distance, 12 feet, and so I get 12 down here. Now, I can visually see that that's in the negative region, so I'm going to go ahead and assign that to be negative. That is your complete influence line for the moment at A. Let's look for the influence line for the shear at section 1-1. One, one. We will insert a release. I'm just going to sketch a shear release at this location. I know I'm going to have to impose a positive shear displacement. But before I get too wild and crazy and sketching the deflected shape, let's see what the support conditions are actually telling me for this. If I look at point C, it's a roller, which means it can rotate, but it cannot move up and down. So I know the displaced position is that. At point A, it's a fixed support, so it cannot move up and down, and it cannot rotate. So I know that as a bare minimum, from point A to section 1-1, that that display shape has got to be horizontal through here. Now I am prepared to impose the displacements. You'll notice just to the left it has a downward arrow, but since I've already got that sketched in it can't move down, so just to the right it's got to move up. So we will put that there, and it's going to be a magnitude of 1. The net distance between those has got to be 1. Now slope cannot change anywhere but at a moment release. So the slope just to the left of section 1 and the slope just to the right of section 1 must be the same. So that would be a zero slope. Now I'm up to a moment release. Slope can change there. So it's not difficult to see how that is going to connect in there. Now we will get the shear at section 2, 2 as with before, insert a shear release, sketch a positive shear couple on that. 
but do not sketch your deflected shape until you identify what the support conditions are actually telling you. Point C. I can rotate there, but I can't move up and down. Point A. I can't move up and down, and I can't rotate. And so, I can't rotate until I get to a moment release. Now I can go ahead and impose a displacement according to the arrows that I've got sketched there. So to the left it moves down, to the right it moves up. That causes this particular jump to go on here. Now the net difference between those has to be one. Since they both share the same length, it'll be half and half. And then the last one we want to get is the influence line for the reaction at CY. I know that at the support, C, I impose a positive unit displacement, but I'm not going to sketch the whole deflected shape until I see what my other support condition is telling me. At point A, it can't move up and down because it's a fixed support and it can't rotate. It cannot change slope until it gets to a moment release. Then I can go ahead and connect those dots. So just very quickly, once again, for a, an influence line for moment, insert a moment release, impose a positive unit rotation. For an internal shear, insert a shear release, impose a positive unit displacement, shear release, positive unit displacement, and then here for a reaction, take the support, impose a positive unit displacement. And that develops your influence lines. That concludes this example. As always, it's a beautiful day for studying structures.